Okay, hello and welcome to the Environmental Science Course Advice Session for Semester 2 2022. My name is uh, Dr. Adrian Dusting. I'm the Program Director for the Environmental Science Course. I'll introduce myself a little more in a second. But first, I would like to um, acknowledge country. So I'd like to pay my respects to the Ngunnawal people, the traditional custodians of the lands upon which UC is based and that I live and work. I would like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to any First Nations people who are listening to this recording. First up, we have a video here, uh, a welcome from our Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology, uh, Professor Janine Deacon. I've put the link on these slides, which I'll also post online. I encourage you to um, have a look at Janine's video before you plow into the rest of this session. Uh, first of all, who am I? Just as a quick introduction, I always think it's nice to know to whom you're speaking. Um, my name's Adrian. You will see me in many of your lectures in first year across a few different units, data analysis, skills for science, uh, contextual physics, or perhaps diversity of life and habitats, as well as other things I'm around. Uh, but I'm also the program director for environmental science, as well as forensic studies as well. Um, you may need to contact me at some stage during your course. The best way to do that is to use the email address here. Uh, that is a generic email address for our education team. And if there's anything that they think I can help you out with, they'll escalate it to me. The, oh, by way of explanation, that's not me in that photo there. Uh, that is my finger though. Uh, this was a photo taken during my PhD research on a little snail called Potamopergus antipodarum. I challenge you to have a few cordials and say that quickly. Uh, that is indeed a photo of my, my fingernail though. And this photo was published in uh, the Canberra Times a few years ago. And rather than getting any congratulations calls from my colleagues, I got a few calls pointing out that my cuticles are in poor condition. So there, there you have it. If you want to point out um, how poor condition my cuticles are or discuss more about my research, please come and, come and have a chat to me. Uh, so this mistakenly says semester one, uh, 2022, but most of you of course will be joining us in 20, uh, semester two. Uh, however, these contacts are still the same. First, we have our executive team. So at the top there, we have our executive dean, Professor Janine uh, Deegan, our associate dean of education, Tamsin Kelly, and our head of school of science, um, Professor Tariq Azaz. Tariq is actually here in the room. Would you like to come and uh, introduce sure. yourself, Tariq? Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Professor Tariq Azaz. I'm the head of school of science. Um, welcome everyone, and uh, I would like to see you all at the lunch. So where you'll be, <laughs> you'll be given more formal welcome from on behalf of the school as well as from the faculty. So enjoy, welcome again to University of Canberra, and enjoy your time here. So I'll pass it on over to Adrian. Thanks, Adrian. Excellent. Thanks, Tariq. And truth be known, all going well with your course and your degree. You possibly won't even interact with our dean, associate dean, or head of school during your course, but um, but they do also teach classes, so you will see them in that in, in that context. Uh, I am one program director in science. The other is Dr. Hilary Coleman. She takes care of more of the biomedical and medical science side of our school. Uh, that's me. And we also have an assistant program director. Uh, and first year science student coordinator, Mr. Michael Sidney, who you'll see, um, see around as well. One thing that I encourage you very much to get involved with during your time here at UC is student societies. So student societies bring a lot of life to our campus, but they also extend and complement what you're studying in the classroom. So I have some representatives here from the UC Environmental Science Society who would uh, like to have say a quick hello and introduce themselves. Come this way, this is towards. Hello everyone. I'm Britt. This I'm, is Norbert. I'm Peter. Um, we're from the Environmental Club. So we're a social club here on campus and we run a bunch of events uh, throughout semester for students to come and hang out with like-minded students on campus. Uh, we do a bunch of different events. We had a bunch of movie nights last semester and this semester we're hoping to get out a bit more and do some more bushwalks and stuff like that around campus. So if you're interested in joining the club there's the links there as well as there's a bunch of other science clubs and societies on campus. You can check them out and come along to our events. Uh, our membership is five dollars so if you pay that for the whole semester, you get to come to all of our events for free. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Thank you very much. 
For more uh, sort of administrative matters, uh, you will need to go to Student Central to help you with various things from passwords, from setting up your email, from helping you with enrollment, all sorts of all sorts of things. This should be your first port of call uh, for anything to do with your course for administration, enrollment, etc. Uh, you can contact them by email. However, they also do have a drop-in uh, center in over in Building One. Before you get to that point though of, of reaching out to the Student Centre, you'll probably find most of the information you're after is actually available through the digital handbook. Uh, that is a hyperlink there, which again will be available through the slides. I encourage you to go through the digital handbook and look up um, things like what units you might want to take semester, what requirements there are for your course. Um, you can find the contact details for your conveners and things like that through the digital handbook. There's a wealth of information there. And I suggest you that, um, well, I guess your, if the student center is your first port of call, this is your zeroth port of call. If you do find that you're, you need a little bit of course advice, you're not quite sure what to study next, you've got some complications in terms of you need to go part-time perhaps, or you want some credit for previous study, then you can do so um, by visiting the drop-in centre for in our student centre or contacting that SciTech uh, student inquiries email address, which is in very tiny writing in the top right corner there, but is also the same address as I put up earlier uh, as your first port of, uh, as your primary contact within the faculty. Within the communicate, uh, sorry, within the university, when you are communicating with the student centre, with the faculty team, with any of your conveners, it's really important that you use your um, student email address. So there are some things that we can only talk to you about via your student email address. Uh, this is for identity verification purposes. So make sure when you're contacting staff at the uni or indeed other students that you use your UC email. If you need help setting up that email address, you can contact the IT service uh, desk or as, as before, the um, student centre will be able to help you out with that. Canvas is kind of like our information hub for, for all our students. So you will already be automatically uh, enrolled in Canvas and you should already be subscribed to the School of Science Course Advice and Information Canvas site. And this has a lot of the inf uh, similar information to what I just mentioned. So um, how your course is structured, contacts within your course, where you can get more help, etc. You will also be subscribed to a separate Canvas site for each and every unit that you are enrolled at during, sorry, enrolled in during your time here at UC. So you can see here in the top left corner, I am enrolled in contextual physics with mathematics, or at least I was in semester one this year. I'm also uh, enrolled in the academic integrity module and the School of Science information page that you're all enrolled in. Uh, so every time you need to contact, uh, sorry, you need to find out a little bit of information that's specific to a unit, go to your Canvas site first, look up what information's there. And if you're struggling, See, look through the discussion boards, for instance, on the site and see if uh, one of your peers, one of your fellow students can help you out or um, have a poke around and see if the information can't be found elsewhere. <clears throat> in terms of the School of Science course advice and information canvas site, uh, there, as I mentioned, there's lots of information out there about study plans, frequently asked questions. We also announce a lot of opportunities, so volunteering opportunities, internships, grad programs, so jobs for, for after your study and, and things like that. We, we announce them through the School of Science um, course advice site. I will just say one more quick thing about Canvas. Most conveners run their units um, uh, during semester with the assumption that students are reading and are familiar with all information that's up on Canvas. So when I call it the information hub of, of our units, I very much mean that. So it's to the point where if I post an announcement, I expect that students have, have read it. So it's something that you should be uh, actively engaging with and checking every single day. On campus, we also have many study skills resources that you should make take use of, uh, sorry make use of. I say on campus, but also virtually uh, uh, as well as as well as physically on site. At some point during your study, you might find that you need a little bit more help with maths and statistics, perhaps. In which case, you you would um, hit up our MASH center that's listed there. Or it's even possible that one of your unit conveners might, as a bit of feedback on an assignment, suggest that you pursue 
um, a workshop in referencing or something like that. Some ser some server um, some workshop that's offered by study skills. Now, don't take this as an insult. Don't take it as a comment on on you necessary on you personally or anything. It's merely services that can help you brush up your skills to complement your studies. So do make sure you're uh, taking you uh, sorry making use of study skills. In addition to study related services, there's also a lot of health and wellbeing services available on campus. Make sure you take advantage of medical and counseling if appropriate to you. I know that they uh, bulk, uh, bulk bill a lot of their services for students. And so effectively free for students. So make sure that if um, you need those kind of services, that, you, that, you, that you're taking advantage of them. Uh, likewise, student wellbeing um, can help with uh, extracurricular concerns that you might have and you just need a little bit of support with. So they can provide advice, they can provide referrals if need, if need be, they can assist you even with financial difficulties, with academic grievances, a whole raft of things. If you are feeling that you need a little bit of um, assistance and support that isn't necessarily medical and counselling, that isn't something academic that you can go to a unit convener about, uh, student wellbeing is probably a good place to go. There are, uh, as well as these specialized services, there are a bunch of other ones as well. So Careers UC can help you with, well, as you as you guess, uh, the job hunt af after your course, but also from day one, they're helping students uh, with finding placements during their course, with finding short-term employment during their course. So make sure you use Careers UC if it's appropriate. Inclusion UC, these, these are for students who have some ongoing, uh, usually health condition or health concern uh, that, um, that the university can help you make allowances for. And so we can provide cir uh, circumstances or situation or support that, uh, that can um, help, uh, help you uh, with whatever health condition you might have uh, that might be otherwise affecting your studies. International students, there, an inter there is an international centre. Likewise, for our Indigenous and Ab uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students, there is a Ngunnawal centre. Student advocacy and food pantry are also uh, services that are specialised and you might want to look into. I will point out there are also um, a range of retail services on campus uh, that I suggest uh, you, you make use of. Lots of food and drink, drink um, services, but there's also things like, um, also things like the UC shop. Where you can provide, where you can buy a lot of the things you'll need for for, for study. There's also hairdressers and, and so on, things like that. So there's lots of things to explore on campus. One thing you might consider is to, is signing up for the UC Student Mentor Program. This program is um, the mentors and the mentees are all students. So these are students who have got, you're mentored by a student who have who has gone through um, some study before. They're usually in their second or third year. And they can help people adjust to, to life at university, whether it be um, life on campus, life in the residences, or, um, or how to actually fall into study patterns that are healthy and productive, and lead to success. Speaking of success in your studies, you should make use of the Student Resource Centre. This is fortunate for us over in Building 6. So, um, we're currently presenting from Building 27. Building 27 is where the environmental science uh, laboratory is. And so a lot of you will have classes in here. The building, building 6 is just across the way. Um, the entrance to the Students Resource Centre is on the ground floor there. There's lots of spaces to chill out, to relax, to eat by the looks of this uh, photo. Um, but also study. So do some group, group study sessions. There's lots of textbooks in there that you might want to ta take advantage of. All right, so let's discuss a little bit about how your actual course works. So how you put together your course from what a unit is to what a major is to what a degree is. So you'll hear a lot of these terms thrown around. So let's go through some of those now. I've lost control of my device. All right, there we go. So the first of all, teaching period. So there are two semesters per year. Um, semester one, we've just finished. It goes from early February to, to late May. Uh, we're about to commence semester two, starting next Monday on the, the 1st of August. There are 13 weeks in a typical semester. At the end of week four, we have the census date. So that's Friday, 26th of August for this coming semester. It is by that date that if 
that you should have settled exactly what uh, units you're going to take. It is too late to pull out after that point without suffering some academic or financial penalty. Now, of course, end of week four is over a third of the way through semester. So you should have well and truly commenced all your units uh, weeks before that. But certainly if you are considering uh, withdrawing from a unit, you should discuss it with your unit convener and make sure you've done so before that census date. Um, all of your timetables from your units will be available through Allocate. All of the rough uh, timetable of activities, so the schedule of how your units will progress, will be available through your unit outline. However, it is important once again to engage with Canvas to watch out for updates as they occur throughout semester. All right, so first of all, what's a unit? Hopefully you recognize um, from the top right corner there, this list of all our SI base units. That should be a little test at the start of semester, at the start of your enrollment. What do each of these stand for? Um, if you don't know any of them or you wanna chat about them, come and talk to me. I love talking about units. However, this is a different sort of unit we're talking about. A unit is effectively a subject, okay? So it's a specific subject. It might be biological concepts or chemical concepts or contextual physics. It is usually one semester long. So each unit is one semester long and typically they are worth three credit points. We do talk, refer to them as biological concepts and so on, uh, but we also, each of them has an identifying code and we tend to shorthand to this um, if, wherever possible. So biological concepts, for instance, is otherwise known as 11722, Chem Foundations 11768 and so on. Okay, So each unit has a unit code. In terms of majors and minors, once again, this is a totally misleading graphic. I apologize for that, couldn't help myself. Um, when we're talking about a major, we are of course actually talking about a sequential set of units within a specified area. So if you like, within your degree, within your course, this is your specialization. It is usually composed of eight units worth three credit points each. So therefore a major is worth 24 credit points overall. Okay. You will progress through levels. So you start with level one units, otherwise known sometimes as first year units, and then they will lead into second year units and they will lead into third year units. And you will um, gradually build up to completing what we call capstone units at the end of level three that round off your major. A minor is like a major, uh, except that it's shorter, I guess. So instead of eight being composed of eight units, it's composed of four units. In other words, 12 credit points. Um, um, most of you will not be taking minors within the Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science. Um, we have particular requirements with the, within the Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science. The mean you'll actually complete more like three majors instead of, um, instead of any minors. However, you may hear references to older courses that do make use of minors. So you'll know what they are now. So most of you, as I say, will course complete without doing a minor. In terms of your expected workload, I mentioned that one unit is three credit points. Each three credit point unit has a total workload of about 150 hours per semester. So for a typical unit in, in say biological concepts in your first semester, you will be expected to do about 150 hours of work. And that includes contact hours, so around four contact hours per week, Around four to eight independent study contact hours on top of that though. So that might be readings that we set you. It might be videos or concept, um, so, some other complementary study that we recommend or prescribe. And it's also to, to make sure you're doing your assignments during that, that time. So as a rough guide, you should be looking at a, between eight to 12 hours in total per week for the 13 weeks of semester. If you are a full-time student, that means you are taking four units uh, per semester. Okay, so you're doing four times 150 hours, four different units. If you are part-time, um, that means you're doing one or two units each semester. Okay, so I'll introduce you to a little bit uh, to, to our courses, um, especially the Bachelor of Environmental Science, obviously. But first I thought I'd start broad. 
we sit within the Faculty of Science and Technology. Okay, so that means that we've got people doing science, like in the top left here, important things like looking down a microscope, staring at blue liquids and wearing safety glasses. And we also have the, sci uh, the School of Technology, so Information Technology Services, well, Systems, isn't it, ITS. Uh, and I don't really know what they do, but it looks probably something a little bit like the bottom right. That's how I envisage it. So within that School of Science, you can you can study a range of things. So this person, for instance, is branching out into looking into red liquids, which is very exciting. Um, but you can do you can do so study some biomedical or medical science. Now I've combined uh, these together here because they tend to take a lot of the same units. But um, yes, yeah, so we have both biomedical and medical science. We also have forensic studies, which I imagine looks a little bit like this. Uh, the forensic studies course is currently in teach out. However, it's possible you may be able to pick up one or two forensics uh, units before they're done. You, of course, have taken the fifth option, which is the uh, Bachelor of Science Environmental Science, which is an excellent choice. And I'll declare my bias here because environmental science is my own area of research. Uh, while you're here with us studying, there is a real focus on what we call experiential learning. Okay, so this means using a really practical hands-on approach. And I've included lots of photos here like bogging cars and walking around the arid zone and, and getting in and out of rivers and so on and so forth. But it also means lots of learning in the lab. Okay, lots, lots of hands-on activities within the laboratory environment and lots of workshops where you're interacting with people from industry, people from government, but as well as your um, lecturers and and using uh, it's through a lot of these interactive classroom environments that you will be um, that you will be learning and uh, we will be assessing you. So gone are the days of the dusty old lecture theatre, and indeed a lot of this experiential learning um, we do through work integrated learning. So you can see here some people clearly at work because they're walking and talking and they've got clipboards and things. Um, there is industry engagement um, throughout your course. So we bring in people from outside uh, in order to deliver labs, deliver workshops, deliver seminars, whatever it might be. But towards the end of your course, you will also go out into the uh, a work environment and you will do a research placement or a professional placement where you'll actually be doing a short internship. Okay? So something you can even be thinking about from day one of your course. In terms of the structure of your course, lucky you guys, you are doing, you're commencing what is actually a brand new course. It's only, bit, we're only one semester into our new Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science. The way it's structured looks a little bit like this. So note that this is a typical study plan that I've put together for you here. Um, semester two is in the left-hand column and semester one is in the right-hand column. So that very top left-hand box of four units that will be what most of you will be studying this semester. And hopefully you're already enrolled in biological concepts, data analysis skills for science, diversity of life and habitats, and professional orientation science. Then semester one next year is when you will take that top right-hand box, physics, meeting environmental challenges, applied ecology. You also have open electives, and I'll get to those in just a minute. So in blue, I've highlighted the units that we refer to as our core major in science. And this is where you lay down the foundational science that you will build upon in your other, in your environmental science specialization. So there are four foundational content units and they are biology, physics, data analysis and science and, and chemistry. You will also be taking four professional units at first year, second year and third year. So scaffolded throughout your course. Um, and the first of those will be in your first semester, that is professional orientation. In green, you'll be doing the eight units that build up to your specialist major in environmental science. This is composed, as I say, of eight units that take you again from first year, to four units in second year, and, and two in third year, our capstone units. And this, we have this beautiful situation where in, finals, in your final year, you will be taking tackling environmental challenges water, and tackling environmental challenges, conservation. And these two um, areas, water and conservation, align with two research strengths of UC that make, um, that make our um, Institute for Applied Ecology, got the name there for a second, Institute uh, for Applied Ecology, a globally significant research body. 
And finally, I haven't highlighted in yellow, but left over those white spaces, and you'll, those counting carefully will see I've missed one in our table, um, you'll have eight open elective units. And these you can use in any flexible manner you wish. So you could go and find another major in another faculty even and complete that. And so you pick up a third major. And we'd call that a breadth major. Or you might choose to take eight different, completely different open elective units. There's this fantastic flexibility in the course. So if you want to go and do history of ice cream or prehistoric computing or whatever it might be, uh, you, you can go and pursue that interest as part of those open electives. An important note here, however, is that you are required to take as a core unit 11724. So that is chemical concepts. And you can see that I've got it there in um, second semester. Um, sorry, second semester next year. So in the roughly in the middle on the left hand column there. There is assumed knowledge for chemical concepts, and that is that you have completed year 12 um, high school level chemistry. If you are, do not feel that you are confident in your chemistry enough to say that you um, can plow into chemical concepts without doing a little bit of a brush up, then I strongly suggest that you take another unit we have called chemical foundations. The code for that one is 11768. All of this information is on the, um, the typical study plans that you can pick up uh, from our faculty education team. Okay, so just a reminder that before you enroll in chemical concepts, it doesn't have a prerequisite, but it does have assumed knowledge of high school year 12 level chemistry. Okay, something important to keep in mind. Finally, there's a lot of information here. If you are, um, if you find that you need a little bit more information, as I say, first port of call, hit up that digital handbook, hit up the, the Canvas site for our science core, uh, information and course advice page and you make use of our faculty education team which is that SciTech student inquiries at canberra.edu.au um, email address. If you if there's something a little bit trickier or there's something that you, you need a bit more advice on that education team those educate sorry the education team will escalate it to myself or to Hillary as program director. Okay, so you can, there's many, many different place, places you can find the information you need and many different places you can come to for additional help. Finally, I'm asked to tell you to, uh, to follow SciTech through Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to keep up to date with what we are, the latest of what we're doing. That's actually it. That's everything I want to cover. Um, I look forward to meeting most of you once you're on campus. Thanks a lot, guys.